In this lesson, we'll talk about REST machining. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to analyze different approaches to machining a pocket, modify toolpath parameters, and identify the most efficient toolpath option. At this point in our course, we've already created several REST machining operations, but we haven't really taken the time to understand REST machining and really why we'd want to apply it. In general, we really are looking for a handful of things when we talk about machining parts. Depending on your industry, of course, these will change, but in general, we want to figure out how to machine parts as quickly as possible. We don't want to sacrifice things like surface quality or tolerances, and we want to minimize the amount of wear on our tools. Because of these reasons, it makes the most sense to use our adaptive tool paths whenever possible and to use rest machining operations. So that way we can utilize larger tools to remove the most amount of material quickly and use the smaller tools to come back and take smaller chunks. So let's take a look at this file, open and close 2D rest machining, and understand three different strategies that we could use when we're machining this part. Now this example has a pocket in the center that has some smaller regions in the corners, which means that we can't come in with a large tool and get into those corners. We really need to use a smaller tool to finish it off. We also have a couple open pockets on the outside. So in this file, we have three setups. And setup one contains a 2D adaptive roughing operation with a half inch end mill. Then we come back and do some rest machining with a smaller end mill. And finally, a 2D contour to finish off all of the pockets open and closed. In setup two, we have a very similar strategy. However, instead of using a larger end mill, then coming back and doing rest machining, we simply use that adaptive toolpath with a single smaller tool that's small enough to get into all the corners. Then we come back, of course, with a 2D contour to simply clean up all the outside perimeters of all of our pockets. Then the last option, setup three, we're using a traditional 2D pocket. When you have a traditional 2D pocket operation, this means that we're not traditionally looking at keeping a consistent chip load on the part, but we're really following the outside shape or the profile of our pocket. This means that we often have areas where we're engaging a large amount of material or a large section of our tool, specifically when we go into and out of corners. This means that we have sections where we have a spike in the load on the tool, and then we have a smaller section where we're not engaging in those corners. Because of this, we have to be careful with how much we cut with our tool. So traditionally, you'll see these pocket operations take smaller depth cuts or multiple depths rather than going to a full depth for a pocket and having full engagement of our tool. So with this style, we have a 2D pocket, then we still have rest machining, but the rest machining again is following the multiple depth strategy as well as the multiple step ins based on the shape of our pocket, and then finally a 2D contour. So all three of these strategies are fairly similar in nature, but taking a look at the adaptive toolpaths as well as using adaptive rest machining, we're really gonna to start to understand the benefits. So the first thing I wanna to do to get started is I'm gonna select setup three, I'll activate it, but then I'm gonna simulate this. So I simply wanna start playing it and you can speed it up if you want to, but I wanna take a look at the strategy that's used here. So the tool has a small helical entry, then it starts to move around and again, matching the shape of our pockets, whether it's open or closed. It is able to enter the open pockets from the outside, so it does have a good strategy there. However, again, as we get into and out of these corners, we're engaging a large amount of material, which means that we're going to see the loads on the tool spike, as well as the wear. Then it's going to ultimately come back and it'll do that contour tool path to do the finishing cuts on everything. Now, the last operation in all three of these, the 2D contour, is going to be the same across the board. We're doing a single finishing cut on all of our pockets, so there's really no difference in that operation specifically. So what we're really going to focus on here is going to be the difference between our 2D pocket and rest pocket operations, and then our adaptive and our adaptive rest. So with this setup, setup three, if we go to statistics, we can see that the total machining time is about 26 minutes. Its machining distance is approximately 500 inches, there are three operations and two tool changes. If we activate setup two, this has got the least number of operations. This has two operations. We're looking at an adaptive with a smaller end mill, 
and then we're taking a look at the contour again using that same smaller end mill. So if we take a look at the way that this is going to approach it, again it's using that adaptive motion, which is keeping that consistent load on the tool. The load is something that we program into the toolpath, so we can dictate how much material is getting taken out of each cut. But you can see the strategy here is taking a full depth cut, and it's moving in, keeping that load or the amount of engagement on that tool consistent. Then it comes back and it does our 2D contour to finish. If we take a look at the statistics here, you can see that this is machining time about 10 minutes, and the machining distance is 230 inches. Now, if you remember the pocket operation, the traditional 2D pocket, was about 500 inches of machining distance. And this is because it had to handle multiple depths. So we're going to close this, and we're going to take a look at Setup 1 now. And again, we want to select Setup 1, then go into Simulate, and we're going to play through this. So by far, this one is starting with the largest end mill. It has a half inch end mill, and you can see the helical entry is actually able to take out quite a bit of material just by entering the part. Then again, using this adaptive tool path, it's taking a consistent chip load on the tool. As much as it can clear out with this end mill, it's gonna work back into each corner as far as it can go. It'll wrap it over, and then it'll go to the outside, the open pockets. It'll clear them out relatively quickly and then it'll make a tool change. And you can see there are some issues in this tool path. We have some red sections where we're engaging material. And what's happening is there's a small amount of material that's left by in these original operations, which simply means that we need to do a little bit more work in terms of setting up these operations. And we'll talk more about that when we actually get into the setup. But what we wanna take a look at is the approach to this tool path. It's taking the large end mill in, it's coming back with the smaller end mill to get the areas where it couldn't reach. Then ultimately it's ending up with that contour operation that all of them were ending with. If we take a look at the statistics, you can see that the machining time is just over seven minutes and the machining distance is 190 inches. So we were able to reduce the amount of machining distance because we started out with that larger end mill and we were also able to reduce the machining time by three minutes. Now, three minutes might not seem like a lot, but when we're talking about a difference between seven minutes and 10 minutes, that's a 30% difference. And also considering that traditional 2D pocket was around 26 minutes, we've dropped almost 20 minutes off the machining time. So this is a drastic change when we're machining these parts. And again, there are more things that we can do here. We can edit the tool pass to increase the efficiency maybe increase the chip load based on the actual tool that we have. And again, there are multiple things that we can do, increase the RPM and the feed rate, et cetera. But the main thing that we wanna understand, we wanna focus on is really just the main difference in the programming, the machining time, the amount of feed distance that we're seeing between very similar operations, the adaptive rough and the adaptive rest versus the single adaptive tool path with the smaller end mill. That alone, even though we're increasing the number of tools we're using, we're introducing a tool change in there, we're actually reducing the overall time by quite a bit. And then if we take a look at this versus a traditional 2D pocket style operation, well, we're really dropping a whole lot of time here for a relatively simple part. So just keep this in mind as we start to program and we start to utilize these rest machining operations, even on these fairly simple parts where we're talking about 2D or 2.5D style machining, it can make a drastic difference in how many parts you can cut in an hour and how quickly you can remove that material. So from here, I urge you to go into each of these tool paths and just simply edit some of the parameters. For example, if we come into the adaptive roughing tool path and we edit this, we can come into the passes and the stock to leave and we can reduce this to 0.01. And this will allow that half inch end mill to cut a little bit more material out and maybe reduce the amount of time that we have when we come back with that adaptive rest toolpath. When we take a look at the adaptive rest, we can come in and modify the parameters for rest machining. For example, we could increase or decrease the diameter of the tool that was used to create. In this case, if we increase that to 0.55 and 0.30, this is telling it that it's leaving a little bit more material. So this smaller end mill that comes back is actually going to remove just a bit more material. So maybe we won't have those small areas that are left behind by that first operation. 
So a lot of different things that we can do here. And again, I really urge you to just play around with these because there's no penalty to playing around and validating this digitally. Once you're done with that, make sure that you go ahead and save your file and then move on to the next step.